Well, that's what people say at Christmas, right? Except for normally they have somebody to say it to. They have friends and family. And they haven't been crouched naked under a Christmas tree with a needle in their arm like an insane person in a mansion in Van Nuys. They're not out of their minds. They're not writing in a diary. And they're definitely not watching their holiday spirit coagulate in the spoon. I didn't speak to a single person today. I thought, why should I ruin their fucking Christmas? I've started a new diary, and this time I have a few new reasons. One, I have no friends left. Two, so I can read back to remember what I did the day before. And three, so if I die, at least I leave a nice little suicide note of my life. It's just me and you, diary. Welcome to my fucking life. Yeah, nobody would believe the shit that happens inside my head. Now I've come down from the drugs, it seems like a sick play that I saw in a theater somewhere. You know, 30 minutes ago, I could have killed somebody, or better yet, myself.
got in a room and started writing songs for the Heroin Diaries soundtrack. And what a fucking journey it's been ever since, and you guys have been with us since the very beginning. So this is like a family reunion of sorts. A fucked up one, but a family reunion. Hey, give it up for Apocalyptica!
than we are up here on stage! Speaking of which, I'm gonna do a song called Dead Man's Ballet. Yeah. 
for t-shirts out there. It looks pretty fucking good. It gives me great pleasure right now to introduce one of the most talented human beings I've ever met in my life. My brother, Mr. DJ Ashba. Let's hear it for James Michael. What the fuck? New York City! We are so happy to be here. What a dream fucking come true. It reminds me of when I was a little boy, I grew up in a little tiny church town where they taught you not to follow your dreams, where they wanted you not to step outside of a bubble. And very church community. And I was the one that said, fuck the bubble. And my dad took me to my first concert, which happened to be Motley fucking crew. <laughs> Yeah, but uh, I'm up here. Thank God. Thank you all for being here. Dreams do come true, man. It's a blessing to be able to share a stage with Nikki Six and James Michael and everybody else. Gus and Melissa, Amber. Thank you guys so much for being here. We love you. <laughs> we are in New York fucking city at Best Buy Theater. Holy shit. It sounds like you guys have warmed up your voices a little bit. Are you ready to do a little singing? Fuck yeah! 
All right, we're gonna stick on the uh, Heroin Diaries soundtrack. Don't give up. Sister, sleep. 
We're having a staring contest right now. So I have to tell you that what's happening right now, you guys looking at me and us looking back at you, I've had this in my dream. I just never knew it was actually going to come true. It's, it's kind of surreal. Here you are, and here we are. So I want to thank you guys for making that dream come true, because to be honest with you, we would probably still be back in Los Angeles being selfish pricks, being artistic, and not getting out of the road. And you guys made us get on the road. You guys made us become a band. I want to backtrack a little bit. Um, I was working on a book called The Heroin Diaries. And during that time, I, I think I was trying to figure out myself and where I'd come from as a kid, where I got to as a drug addict and a rock star, and then where I was at at the time in my life when I was sober. And James and DJ and myself were all best friends. We all respected each other as songwriters and artists, and we decided to try to write some music for that book, and that was it. But while it was happening, we started talking more and more, and we started realizing that we all came from fuck up past. We all knew somebody that was damaged. We all had scars, and while it was happening, we were pulling the scab off of the wound, and we were looking inside. And while that was happening, we were starting to heal. We were starting to realize that we were not the bullshit that was put on us. We were not our fucking past, and we were gonna fucking move forward, and something happened. We wrote a song, accidentally, called Life is Beautiful. And at that moment, we knew something magical was happening between the three of us, and some crazy person at radio decided to play that song, and somebody else played it, and it started connecting all around the world, and we started, we started realizing that through complete honesty, came something that was unique and fresh, and that was 6 a.m., and we decided to keep forging on, but we were selfish. We were not gonna tour. We said we would never tour. I know you read interviews where I said we would never tour, and I meant it. And like anything that you say in life when you're so grandiose about it, you're usually full of shit. So we worked on another album, selfishly, called This Is Gonna Hurt, and during the book signings for that book, and when the music was released, thousands of people were coming to the book signings, and thousands of people were now emailing us and talking to us through Facebook, how that message had connected to them. And we just knew we were on to something, but we weren't gonna tour, and then we did Modern Vintage, and I guess we just, we just don't have a fucking choice anymore. You guys made us a fucking band. So now you have a small problem on your hands that next year we're going to release our fourth album and a world fucking tour. And if you don't mind, we would like to be your fucking band. Just when I thought I was going to fucking retire. God damn it. I got 20 years left in me, do you? Let's do this. This is help is on the way.
I say we try it again. Sounds like you're just getting warmed up. So let's do another one I think you guys know. This is called Stars. Do you want to go to heaven tonight? Leave the evidence far behind. Say, all right. Yeah. <laughs>